camera's on right now? Yes, it's on. We're recording. Are you sure they're not going to be able to see me? No, they won't. Or hear my voice or... Correct. We'll, uh, we'll edit this out accordingly. Okay, alright. I mean... What did you want to ask me? Well, first of all, we like to know when your Hot Toys addiction started taking place. <sighs> Man, um... Well, there was uh, several times uh, that I can remember where I started noticing, you know, different things happening. Uh, it started with something small like uh, the UPS driver would come by and I'd slip him 20, 30 bucks to hide the figures in the bush. Um, that was kind of embarrassing. I didn't, I didn't want my family to see that the, the figures were coming in. Um, the other time was when my girlfriend came in and she caught me combing Selena Kyle's hair, maybe using a little bit of Aquanet. Silky smooth, silky smooth. Seriously, John, again? Whatever, it has to be silky smooth. Um, and I guess the, the, the worst was when I uh, just ran out of money and I, I needed to pre-order this figure really bad. I forget which Hot Toys figure it was. And I just went to my grocery store and I started panhandling. Look, you know, I just, I don't think I could do this. This is, you know, can we just, can we just shut it off really quick? Can you, can you shut it off really quick? Just, just shut it off. Welcome back Sideshow fans and Hot Toys collectors. My name is John Deke and I am your host of Final Production, which is a new show Sideshow is doing uh, where we are showing uh, final production sample pieces of uh, the latest Hot Toys figures that uh, actually this one hasn't even been uh, announced yet on a Hot Toys uh, Facebook page, which is pretty intense for me because I am crazy excited to see what the Mark L looks like in person. Before I dive right into it with this figure, I just want to take a quick minute and discuss one particular thing about this figure uh, because it's kind of caused a lot of controversy in the groups and I think it's worth mentioning. Um, you know, as I mentioned to you before in my previous video with the Thanos review, is that I am the founder of One Six Society, which is a uh, Facebook, uh, you know, social group community where uh, you know a lot of collectors come and share photos and so forth. And I remember when this figure announced, and the price was revealed. It was four hundred, and I believe either $406 or $407. I remember going to sleep that night and waking up and having well over 140 new individual posts of uh, you know Hot Toys collectors fairly upset about the price. I actually had to go in and kind of delete all of them and consolidate it into one giant post so people could vent. So. The truth is that this figure is four hundred and six or seven dollars, and we're gonna find out, you know, if that is justified or if it's, you know, worth you spending your hard-earned money on this figure. With that said, let's go over the box. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of me I have the Mark L box, and. I just can't believe that I'm about to see this figure and, and actually get to hold it and review it. Um, it's probably one of the most highly anticipated Iron Man figures to release in a very, very long time. And I'm going to do my best to give this review the, the honor and the descriptive criticism it deserves for all of my fellow collectors out there. I'm going to begin just by simply going over the box. And uh, let's start that right now. So you're going to have a standard slide box where it slides up and slides down. And you're going to have the artwork 
of the box on the front along with Iron Man, Mark L, 1-6 scale collectible figure, MMS 473D23. And then embossed in gold at the bottom is going to be Marvel Avengers, Infinity War, Hot Toys, Movie Masterpiece, and then this is a die cast figure. Now, if I rotate it to the side, you're going to get some more artwork of the figure. And again, you're gonna have Iron Man Mark L. Let's go to the other next side right there. Same thing, more artwork over here, Iron Man Mark L. And then on the back of the box, Iron Man Mark L, one six scale collectible figure, Hot Toys Presents. You're gonna have your official Hot Toys hologram and so forth. When you slide the cover of the box off, you're going to have this really unique black and white illustrated artwork of the Mark L. And if you rotate it to the side, you're gonna have a little Iron Man logo of his helmet. And on the other side, the artwork will just continue. And on the back of the box are the superstars who actually worked on creating this figure, which would be Howard Chan, uh, we all know him, uh, JC Hong, and several other members of the Hot Toys team. If you're an Iron Man die cast collector like myself, you're already used to the foam box on the inside. Uh, each one always has the mark of the figure. And in this case, it says Mark L. Now that I've showed you all the box, I am crazy, crazy excited to just get it open set him up and show you exactly what this figure can do. All right, collectors, I have the Mark L set up here. And the very first thing I just wanna get right onto is the stand and show you guys the stand up close. It is a bendy pole stand. So you're gonna be able to, you know, pose him and into different types of uh, flight poses. And then he has a waist grabber that opens and closes and that you are able to adjust by sliding up and down simply by loosening this screw. The uh, bendy pole will simply just pop right in there like that. And you have the beautiful Avengers Infinity War artwork. Um, it's pretty much the same design as all of the other Avengers Infinity War figure stands. Uh, this one in particular will say Iron Man, and at the bottom, it will say Marvel 2019 Hot Toys Limited, all rights reserved. Moving on to the accessories. I am going to start first with this little piece right here, which I'm going to try to get to focus properly. And this is actually a part that goes into the next section of the figure. Uh, it's a, basically an addition uh, to the collar if you are using the Robert Downey Jr. head sculpt. And I'll show you how to put this on later on in the video. Then you're going to receive a total of six hands. Let me show you those hands. The first set of the hands are going to be the rubber hands that are not posable. And let me try to give you a really nice close up so you can see all of the details. Let me get my camera to focus on the paintwork for this hand. And these hands also do light up. The repulsors will light up when you attach them to his arm. But as you can see, just all the little intricate details that you, uh, you know, you've gotten used to with Hot Toys Iron Man figures. You can see some scratches there for, from some battle damage. And uh, same with this arm, I'm sorry, same with this hand right here. Just a nice gold and burgundy hot rod red colors. And then we have the two articulated hands, which also the repulsors will light up on. And with these, you have your traditional finger posing. So you're able to pose it 
any in any which way you would like to. If you own an Iron Man figure, it's going to be you know identical to how all the other uh, fingers are posed for them. But just so you can see, here are the details of the articulated hands. Moving on to the first weapon, which is called the Nano Repulsor Cannon. This thing is crazy cool looking. It attaches to his whole entire arm, which I'll show you in a little bit, and it actually lights up. It lets out a, a beam of light, which is really, really cool. But I wanna take just one moment and show you guys the intricate details of this weapon. Um, I wish I could tell you that I have the expansion pack here with the uh, you know the rest of the parts and the other weapons that he has but unfortunately I don't that'll be another review that I will have to do but just take a look at this thing that is such an awesome 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 weapon I mean when I get mine I'm most definitely displaying him with this arm I mean no question about it you can see the little intricate blue lighting inside of there which also lights up the gold colors, the silvers, I mean, it's just, you, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than, you know, Hot Toys does good paint work, guys. You know that already. But yeah, let me just try to get a really nice, close, focused shot. There we go. Nice and close so you can see all different parts of it. That is an awesome, awesome weapon. So glad they included that. Then the other weapon you're going to have is a hand cannon, which will attach to the left arm. And again, I will show you how to do that later on in the video. And let me try to get this into focus here so you can get an idea of what the colors look like for this. And again, just, you know, vibrant gold, that nice burgundy color and a silver. This cannon in particular, I don't believe lights up. I, uh, I couldn't figure out a way to get it to light up. So I could be wrong. Uh, if a collector later on gets it and it does light up, I do apologize for that. But as far as I could tell, I couldn't get it to light up. But let's just check out the nice details on it. These are actually some of the coolest accessories I have seen for an Iron Man figure yet. And probably the centerpiece accessory for the Mark L is going to be the Nano Booster Wings um, that attach to his back. And let me just try to show you, this is what it'll look like if you have it attached to the figure and it is, uh, you know, the back of the figure is facing you. And it does have some parts that move that I want to show you, and I'll show you that right now. So, basically, <clears throat> it has four blades that are going to be able to pop out. The first blade is right here, and you want to gently just lift it up just a little bit. Do not, let me show you this, do not lift this up any more than that. I mean, when you're doing this, if you feel any resistance whatsoever, stop, because you're going to snap it. Don't, don't lift it up too much. So again, take your time, just gently lift it up like that, you know, just to the point where it, res it resists and, uh, you know, stop right there. Over here on the other side is going to be another blade where you're just going to slide it out. And again, on this side, slide it out. And those are exactly the only parts on the Nano Booster Wing that you are going to be able to articulate. And the final accessory is the Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark head sculpt that comes with the Mark L. And I gotta tell you guys, it is just an out of this world, awesome, awesome looking sculpt. Let me try to just, you know, show you every single angle so you are able to see it for yourself. It is sculpted hair as, you know, all of the Iron Man figure head sculpts are, but just a full 360 because I know, 
I know you Iron Man collectors. <laughs> if I miss one thing, you guys will, will crucify me. So I want to make sure I do a really good job. There's a really awesome side profile view. I'll, I'll leave it like that just for one second. And just kind of moving forward and back so you can see it from all his different angles. And that, my friends, is most definitely RDJ and Tony Stark in one. I'm gonna take a moment and show you exactly how to get all of these accessories installed onto the Mark L. So this way you kind of can use this video as a future reference so you don't have any difficulties in getting uh, anything installed. So with that said, let me show you how to install the head. Installing the Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark head is really simple. All you wanna do is first take this mask off so you don't run the risk of having it fly off or, or pop off and cause damage. Get a good grip onto the head like this and gently just pop it right off, just like that. And you're going to notice that there is a ball joint inside there and that the neck and the uh, Iron Man helmet is connected, but if you want it to, let me try to get it to focus, you could potentially pop this off also, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it does come off. In preparation to getting the Tony Stark head sculpt on, you wanna take that little neck collar part that I showed you in the beginning of the video, and it's going to be facing upwards like this, and what you wanna do is on an angle like this, tuck it in behind the ball joint, let it go down, and then kind of just give it a little bit of a push, and that's going to create the collar that you need to hide the neck for the Tony Stark head sculpt. Then what you wanna do is grab the sculpt, position it on the ball joint, and carefully, without damaging anything, pop it right on, just like that. The next accessory I'm gonna show you how to install is the Nano Booster Wings. And it's actually really easy to install. What you're going to do is you're going to notice that there is just the slightest little bit of a gap right here. And I'll show you just how much. You could actually fit one of the battery installation tools right in there if you wanted to. Or you could just take your fingernail and just kind of work it around until you can pop it off just like that. And then you're gonna grab the wings and with the larger sections upwards, you're going to kind of line it up with those grooves and just fit the pegs in and give it a little bit of a push. There you go. Now you're gonna notice that that gap is still there at the top. You don't wanna push too hard because it is meant to be there. The next accessory that I am going to show you how to install is going to be the Nano Repulsor Cannon. And surprisingly, it's a really, really easy uh, install. And all you do is you wanna make sure you grab Iron Man by his upper bicep and then grab his forearm only for the right arm, okay? Make sure it's not for the left arm. It's, it's gotta be for the right arm. Grab the bicep, grab the forearm, and give it a little bit of a pull until the entire arm just slides right off. And then what you wanna do is grab the Nano Repulsor Cannon and with the silver part facing upwards and the gold part facing downward, you're going to just slide it right into place, just like that. And there you have it. It's officially installed, which is uh, pretty darn awesome. That is such a cool, cool accessory. I'm like totally in love with this figure already. Um, moving on, let's keep, let's keep going so uh, I can keep showing you guys everything else. The final accessory I'm going to show you how to install is going to be the hand cannon. And that is actually going to go on this arm here, which is the left arm. 
The easiest way I found to install this would be to pop off the fist like so. And underneath here, you're gonna have a little bit of a, a groove where you're able to just kind of pry this piece, you know, nicely and carefully off just like so. And you take your hand cannon and you find the two holes over there and just match it up like so and pop it on just like that. Pretty, pretty simple. And you can later on put your fist back on. Let's, let's go ahead and try to get the fist back on too. Perfect. And that just looks awesome. That is so cool. Gosh, I'm, I'm in love with this figure already. Now that I have all of the accessories installed, I want to go over the articulation uh, for the figure. Um, just really quickly, if you've owned any of the Hot Toys diecast figures, uh, the articulation is very, very similar, but I do just want to take a moment and go over it with you. The first thing uh, we'll go over is the articulation of the shoulders. You're actually able to grab them and slowly pull each one out to extend them to about right there. And it's worth mentioning that the shoulder pads here are actually metal and they're spring loaded. They don't come forward like some of the other ones. So don't try to pry it or it may break. You're able to raise his arms up and potentially go to about right there. You could maybe do a 360, but you run the risk of scratching the side armor paint. I wouldn't do it if I were you. Same with this arm. You can go up to about right there. You're also going to be able to lift the shoulders up to about right there, I would say, is the safe zone. And you're able to articulate the elbows to this degree. And let me show you a side view for both. That's pretty decent articulation, I think. I'm going to show you next how to extend the chest area and also the waist area. But before you do that, I recommend that you do take the wings off because they will most likely fall off and you could potentially damage them. And it's just a lot easier to handle the figure uh, by removing them. So to extend the upper chest area, just try to grab a hold of him there and give it a little tug and you'll notice that the chest area is now extended and I actually was able to extend the bottom area at the same time. Now that I have the upper chest and the hip area extended, let's go ahead and see what kind of articulation we have with the upper chest area. Let me move the arms out of the way and it looks like we can rotate this way, rotate that way, pretty pretty decent and then if we want to get the hip into into articulation mode too we can go forward to about right there let me show you a side angle you're able to go back about right there in case you want to do like a cool flight pose and you're able to do angles to about right there and to about right there. So you're getting a pretty full range of articulation uh, with the figure. Moving on to the leg extensions. I wanna show you guys how these legs are able to extend. And the best way for me to show you uh, is a good tip that I would recommend everybody to do if you want to extend the legs is grab him by his waist I would move his flaps up just like that, bend the leg out slightly, the bottom area here, place your thumb, grab a hold on his leg, and use your thumb as leverage to pull down like that. And then you're going to be able to really easily 
extend his leg. And if you want to do it with the other one, same thing. You want to grab that, grab your thumb, hold on to the waist, use your thumb as leverage, and pull down. And sometimes it's going to feel like you're breaking it, but you're not. It's, you know, these legs actually pop off, and if they did pop off, you could pop them right back on. Just the one thing you want to be really cautious about are these flaps because if you have them in the way, you could potentially break them off or um, you know scratch them or damage them. The flaps on the Mark L actually lock into place, which is really, really nice. Some of them uh, just kind of fall back in, but if you push this up, it just stays in place really, really nicely. And if you wanna move the legs back down, again, you just kind of want to grab it and just make sure the flaps are up, holster the waist and give it a little push until it's back down. Same with this leg, push until it's back down and then it's all retracted. And if you want to retract the hip and the chest, just kind of hold the midsection and push back down. Let's check out the articulation in the legs you're going to be able to swivel outward to about right there. And you're gonna be able to swivel inward to about right there. You're also able to extend the leg to about right there. Uh, that is without the hyperextension, the extra extension that it has. If you do the extra extension, you're able to get it to go much and you lift up the flap. Let me lift up the flap really quick here. You're able to get it much, much higher as you can see. So, and same with this leg. You're able to go to about right there with the flap up. You're able to go a little further. So let's go ahead and see what, how far it can go with both legs fully extended. You're also able to move these two little flaps up just to get the slightest bit more extension if you want. But now both legs are hyperextended and I'll show you that you can pretty much go all the way up like that. So that's a pretty darn good articulation when it comes to the hip area and the top of the legs. And the knees are ratcheted, so you're able to go up to, they're actually double ratcheted, right there. So let me show you all the way around. You guys are gonna be able to get some awesome flight poses out of this. I mean, seriously, this is like hardcore articulation right here. Let's check out the articulation for the feet. If you want to move the feet forward, I recommend you lift this little flap up in the back and then you can go forward to about right there. Same with this leg, move the flap up as you can see and then you're able to go forward to there. So you're able to get a pretty decent, um, you know, movement as far as, you know, the, um, the flight pose goes. And you'll also notice that these, the top part of his feet are spring loaded. So just in case, you know, when you go up, it moves forward the to toes right there. So you're able to get it really, really pointy and high up too. So that's helpful because these are spring loaded and they kind of slide all around. So let me show you here what that would look like if I straightened him out. Just remember if you're doing forward, you want to lift up those flaps. Then you're also going to be able to get slightly side pivoting on both of the feet. And finally, with his helmet back on, you're going to be able to get a pivot up, pretty much a full 360 degree pivot, left, right, but a pretty decent extension up. I mean, my goodness, that is, Talk about flight pose. They really went all out with that. Jeez, that really is quite the uh, 
the extension. <laughs> wow, I was not expecting that. The next thing I wanna show you is exactly where all the batteries are going to go. There are several compartments on the Mark L that house batteries because this entire figure just has light up features all over the place. So let's go ahead and check out all the different places where the batteries can go. Both legs are going to have battery compartments in them along with the on and off switch. The way you access this panel is simply just take this upper part of the thigh and just pull it back carefully until it pops right out. And then you're going to notice that the battery compartment is right there along with the on and off switch. To get the panel back on, just simply align it properly and just give it a push until it snaps into place and everything is back aligned perfectly. You're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side of the leg. Just simply pull out the side panel and you're going to notice that there's also a battery compartment here and the on and off switch. To put back the panel, all you're going to do is just simply line it up and pop it back into place. The next section that has a battery compartment is going to be the back. The back has a little tiny notch right here that you could fit your fingernails in and just pull back this whole entire back area compartment and that's what it's gonna look like and you'll have your battery compartment here and your on and off switch right there. To replace the back part, just put it back right there and give it a little push. Try not to push too hard at the top. That gap is actually meant to be there. On to the lights in the biceps. These are a bit tricky. What I would recommend is the first thing you wanna do is extend the shoulder as far as you can get it and you want to rotate the bicep up like this to get it out of the way. And you're going to notice that there is a part back here, right over there, that is the back of his bicep. You want to slowly but carefully put your fingernail on the top and just release it like so, and that part is going to come off. Now, for this section on the bicep, this is only going to be the battery compartment. To access the on and off switch, you're going to need to remove another part. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So to access the on and off switch, there is going to be a silver compartment. Let me get that on camera, right there, that you're gonna to want to put your fingernail in, pull out, and there you see the on and off switch. And it's actually going to be the exact same way on the opposite side. The final battery compartment housing is going to be inside of his helmet. You're going to simply lift it off and you're going to access the battery compartment here and also the on and off switch right there. I have the lights dimmed down so we can see all of the lighting features for the Mark L. We're gonna start here with his helmet and slowly pan out so you can get an idea of what the lights look like on this figure. And he's got a lot of, lot of lights. Moving around the body, so you can see all of the lighting. Getting a little closer so you can see the chest area and the bottom of the chest and of the hips. And a straight on shot so you can see the lights straight on. The back of his bicep also lights up as you can see. And his back also has sections where it will light up. And possibly the coolest accessory ever is the Nano Repulsor Cannon, which also totally lights up 
as you can see, that is a pretty awesome shot right there. Comparison time. So I have the Mark 50 or Mark L, whatever you want to call him, uh, next to a Diecast Mark III and the Diecast Iron Patriot. So you guys can see for yourselves the size difference. Um, I can tell you right now, right off the bat, that he is definitely uh, taller than the Mark III. And he is definitely bulkier than Iron Patriot, especially uh, in the chest area. And by looking at it, he is also slightly taller than the Iron Patriot as well. From a side profile, you'll be able to see, you know, again here that he is taller than the Mark III, taller than Iron Patriot. Those wings look so good, man. They're so awesome. But that is a nice size comparison for all you uh, die-cast hot toy Iron Man collectors. That's such a pretty shot, seriously. Wow, that looks so cool. Final thoughts. What do I think of the Hot Toys Mark L Infinity War Iron Man die-cast figure? Well, the first thing that I can say is that the figure is outstanding. It is absolutely gorgeous figure. Probably the coolest accessories any die-cast Iron Man figure has received to date, in my opinion. The paintwork is just phenomenal. The articulation is crazy. I mean, you can get some really crazy articulation out of this. The wings, the cannons, the nanotechnology weapons that you receive, all of the interchangeable parts are completely awesome. If you are a collector and you pre-ordered him, you're absolutely going to love him without a doubt. With that said, what don't I like about this figure? Well, it's the elephant in the room, guys. It's the cost. You know, it's a $406 or $7 figure. You know, granted, you do get these extra accessories that you normally would not get with some of the other Iron Man figures. They're bulkier, more detailed accessories, but he is an expensive figure. And to make matters just a tad bit worse is that you know, you have a accessory pack that's sold separately for $200, which could have been potentially offered with the figure as a set. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, you know, it is expensive, but at the end of the day, you know, if you are a diehard, you know, Iron Man die cast or Iron Man Hot Toys collector, you're gonna get this figure and you know that when it sells out, it's going to be up on Evil Bay for like a thousand bucks. Uh, that is the price part of it. As far as the figure goes, I mean, you'll fall in love with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to set mine into my display case, pose him up. Unfortunately, this one I need to give back to Sideshow <laughs> so they can keep it and uh and do whatever they like with it if you haven't yet take a moment check out the brand new group that sideshow has it's called let your geek sideshow also subscribe to sideshow's channel and make sure you click that bell so you get notifications every single time i upload a review or one of the other uh, Sideshow members uploads a video. I really sincerely appreciate you watching my review. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care.